Let's do another Meanwhile on Snapchat. And this one is a direct result of my last Meanwhile on Snapchat when I was having a look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe and I came away from that video thinking Marvel is in dire straits. And I was looking forward to Multiverse of Madness and Thor 4, but you know, at time of recording now, Multiverse of Madness has come out and it was just fine. But Marvel is in dire straits and they need me to come in and rescue it and how I'm gonna do that I'll come on to in a second but in order for me to rescue it I need some sort of resume so that's what this meanwhile on snapchat is I'm gonna create a comic book universe that can rival Marvel and DC and will be five movies and interconnect and all that stuff so it's going to be fun so I'm going to go through those movies here for you telling you the characters and the plot and all that stuff and I'll tell you why that's important in a minute but let's get into it let's talk about movie one so let's talk about the characters in the movie now you remember Iron Man when it came out in the MCU, right? Nothing really happened. All it did was set up Iron Man. And that's exactly what my movie one does. So our hero is the main character, Hero One, in the movie. And then you have a minor villain who, spoiler alert, does not come back in any of the other movies. And then you have a big bad one who's in the background, so he doesn't quite come out in this movie. Now, there's an overarching plot going on here. Our hero actually gets superpowers the same way that the big bad in the next movie gets superpowers. So that's interesting, but we'll get to that on day two. Okay, so we've got that overarching plot. We'll talk about that more later. But let's talk about the plot of this movie. Our hero, Hero One, is down and out because... He just lost his job. He was some geneticist, um, you know, gene splicing expert. You know how these people are in the movies, right? So he was doing something, he got fired. But then in the lab, there was some experiment going on and then it was about to, you know, cause great deal of problems to the entire world. Things are gonna explode and they're like, we need hero one. So they call this guy back in. No superhero powers at the time. He was just some guy who knows what's going on. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna try and fix this but then the lab's just about to explode and he injects himself with this untested serum. Lab explodes, but he manages to save a bunch of people and he's the first superhero in this world. And there's all this publicity, you know how it would go. He becomes like a hero to people as heroes are in these kind of things. But he's like, oh no, I need some time to figure myself out and also figure these powers out. So he goes on an adventure, which is fun. We join him on this adventure while he's figuring things out. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, there's a minor villain who comes up and we don't actually know who his benefactor is, who's giving the money and the powers and these kind of things, but we don't need to know that yet because this minor villain, he's like a happy-go-lucky guy kind of doing things, getting a bit bad, you know, there's no consequences because he's got superpowers and things start escalating. And our hero has to come back and sort the situation out. And he does. And then at the end of the movie, our hero's like, oh geez, I need to retire from this. I saw what happened to this minor villain, one guy, he was a decent guy, and then this corrupted him. We need to figure this out. We need to figure out what happened at the lab and then move forward from this. And I'm gonna retire from being a superhero, but I'm gonna create a foundation, which we will be researching these things and we'll have an ethical way of bringing this into the world. And that's where the movie ends. This is movie one of five, so things are gonna, be <laughs> they're gonna get crazy. Believe me. Well, don't believe me. I've only written movie one and two so far, but three, four, and five are probably gonna be good as well, I think. See you for day two. This week, we're creating a comic book universe that can rival Marvel and DC, because Marvel and DC at the moment suck at making comic book movies, and also, I need something that I can show Kevin Feige as an example of why I should do the Fantastic Four movie that's coming up for Marvel. So that's what we're doing here. We spoke yesterday about movie one of five, and today we're gonna speak about movie two of five. Let's kick right in with the characters. So yesterday we spoke about Hero One and Big Bad One, who was in the background. Hero One still is in this movie, and then Vigilante is the main character of the movie, and Hero Three, don't worry about the number designation, is also in the movie. 
movie. Vigilante does not have superpowers, but he is a very smart person, kind of like an introvert who's charismatic, loosely based on me, one would say. So he doesn't have powers, but he's experimenting and figuring things out because he has looked into the events of the last movie. What happened with the lab, the explosion, the superpowers, all that stuff. So he's smart and he's looking into that. And unlike the hero one in the foundation, he's gonna come up with a way that he can do it without injecting himself with the serum. So speaking about hero one, we learned in the end of last movie that he retired from being a superhero, mainly because he was like, oh, I saw what happened to my villain one, I don't want that to happen to me, so I'm gonna create this foundation, we're gonna do it ethically. But also, you know, between the lines, he does feel like he has a path that's gonna lead to be a bad person. So, you know, he's trying to get out of that, fair enough. Good on him, right? So the foundation is created and they are looking into superpowers and all this thing and Hero 3 is touted as the next superhero. So publicity and all the stuff around the foundation. He's the one that's being built up and mentored by Hero 1 to become the new superhero. That's Hero 3, okay? But he's new in the game. Hero 3 kind of kicks off the, the problems with this movie. So we'll get there, right? So Vigilante, he's busy figuring out his tech that he's creating, trying to stop local crimes in his area like vigilantes do. And he stumbles upon this plot to buy the substance that he knows is connected to superpowers because he's been looking into it. And uh, we figure out this is big bad one. But he, uh, Vigilante is thinking to himself, I don't know if I should get involved in this sort of thing. So he thinks, I know Hero One and the Foundation, they're the good guys, right? So I'm going to give this information to them. Hero One finds out that this person is actually the old boss from the old lab that he was working at, right? So he knows the person who is Big Bad One and he decides that he's gonna act, but not him necessarily. So he says this is a good opportunity for Hero 3 to, you know, jump into the deep end of a swimming pool and learn something from this experience. So Hero 1 and the Foundation, they've been experimenting with temporary superpowers. Still injectable, still not as good as Vigilante's weapon stuff that you don't have to inject, but they're injecting these things that give people temporary superpowers and they're trying to figure it out. So Hero 1 says, okay, Hero 3, I'm going to give you this temporary superpower thing. You're going to go over there and sort out this bad guy. And then Hero 3 is like, oh geez, I don't know if I'm ready. And and then Hero One's like, yeah, you ready, guy, go over there. Turns out he wasn't ready, and things escalate pretty quickly. Now, you remember from the last movie, where Hero One got his powers, in a lab explosion, he had to inject himself, and then he saved a bunch of people. The similar thing happens here with Big Bad One. The lab explodes once Hero 3 gets there, when things get out of hand, and Big Bad One has to inject himself with this mutated version of the serum. And he survives it. There's a lot of heat and stuff and he gets a bit of a melty face and firepower. Now after this, understandably, he's a bit mad about the melty face. So he says to Hero 1 in a private communique, he says, hand over Hero 3 to me for my judgment for what he did to me. Well, I'm going to burn down your foundation and all the kids and you know whatnot that are there already. And then Hero 1's like, oh geez, I don't know what's going on here. Vigilante is still keeping track of this whole situation. He's like, things are getting out of hand here, especially because Hero 1 was about to hand over Hero 3 to, you know, get murdered or whatever by Big Bad, which is one of the bad things that Hero 1 has done in the movie that you say, hold on, is this guy? a bad guy yeah he's gonna become a bad guy anyway right so vigilante is looking at the situation and he's like i need to intervene so he goes to hero one and he stops him from sacrificing hero three like a lamb and then he goes to big bad one and he talks him down he's like i know you're in pain but killing hero three is not gonna solve that pain because at this point in time you haven't done anything wrong big bad i know you got the melty face and fire powers but you can be a good person and then big bad one's like you're probably right. And he doesn't kill Hero 3. He lets go of his threat about burning down the foundation. And this is where the movie ends. Vigilante going, I don't feel right about this whole situation. Things are getting a bit weird. 
I think we need to get into day three very soon because here are things escalating. And we're only on movie two of five, right? See you tomorrow. Yeah, okay, I know how long yesterday's video was and I've thought about it and today's gonna be no waffling at all. We're gonna get straight to the point and make it short and sweet so we can get through this, right? Movie three of five. The characters in this movie are basically the same as movie two of five. You remember Hero One, right? He was the first superhero in this universe and then he retired from being a superhero and then he created the foundation and then that came up with Hero Three as the next superhero that the world is gonna know is the good guy, right? Well, things didn't end so well for Hero 1 and Hero 3 because basically the foundation that they're working for is in hot water at the moment because they created Big Bad 1. You know the guy with the melty face and the fire powers? Well, yeah, he's going to resurge in this movie and he's going to do some bad stuff. And the vigilante from the last movie, he was like, you haven't done anything wrong yet, Big Bad 1. You can still be a good person and he let him go. Did not murder him, you know, thinking that's a good thing. But in this movie, when Big Bad One's rising up, Vigilante has to question his own motives in the last movie. And he's like, maybe I shouldn't have let this guy go. So you know the foundation's in hot water. We're talking ethically and legally for the stuff they did in the last movie. Well, Vigilante's not touching that with a 12-foot barge pole. So he's staying well away from that. But he is watching what's happening with Big Bad One as he starts rising up, causing chaos. And eventually, these two come to a head. Now, there is one more character in this movie movie that we're not going to talk about, which is female, I was going to say female hero, female villain, basically. Sorry, the only female character in this movie is a villain, but you know, I like villains, so to me it's a compliment. Right, so female villain is a person that works in the foundation, and as this movie comes to its climax... Big Bad One does burn down the foundation, like he threatened in the last movie. And we think that Hero One died in this burning down of the foundation. And that's where the movie ends. Obviously, Vigilante stops Big Bad One, but he still burnt down the foundation and killed the first hero in this stupid universe. <sighs> How long is this, right? I think we're done. If you were to ask me why am I doing movie four and five combined here today, I'd tell you it's the Star Wars principle. You know how in Star Wars movies they kind of rhyme. This is like intentional. You know how a poem rhymes? Well, those movies are meant to rhyme in their storylines and plots. And a similar thing happens here where a lot of the things that we learned in movies one, two, and three kind of come back in these four and five. Four and five is like a Avengers Infinity War Endgame situation where they're two standalone movies, but the plots do kind of drive each other. Okay, but that's like what I would say. A cynical person would say it's because you just stabbed yourself in the eye with your sunglasses and it feels like I'm blinking more than I should and my eye is about to fall out my head and I want to get this over with. But that's a cynical person. Let's go through the characters in these movies. So Vigilante is not actually in the fourth movie, but he comes back in the fifth movie. The fourth movie is a similar thing to the first movie where you have a hero versus a throwaway villain and in this case it's female villain now no offense female villain you know i like her but she's she's not that important except for the fact damn it i did it again oh, i'm not re-recording female villain actually does come back in the next movie she's a big part of the whole thing i don't know why i kept i've written this out and, and, and in the script it's like female villain's important say she's important and i keep keep saying she's not important. She's very important, okay? Here's what happens, right, in the fourth movie. So we learned at the end of the third movie that Hero One died in the fiery explosion that the big bad one did. Well, Hero One didn't actually die because female villain rescued him from this thing and saved him. And then in the fourth movie, there is no Hero One. So Hero One is now a benefactor, like in the first movie, of female villain. So she gets mentored by him, but he's in the shadows now, and he is turning into Big Bad 2. So the hero from the first movie is going to be the Big Bad in the final fifth movie. It's kind of symmetry and rhyming, right? Poetry. So female villain, 
fights against Hero 3. Hero 3 was disgraced in the foundation and all the previous stuff, but now he's grown into a proper superhero and he has to fight against female villain. And this is the fourth movie plot. And then the fifth movie is when Vigilante comes back as like a big team up, you know, everything celebration kind of movie. I'm not going to tell you the plot, but it's obviously Vigilante and Hero 3 versus female villain and then Big Bad 2 which is the hero from the first movie. Okay, we've gone through all of that. That's amazing. Did I blink more than usual? Oh. Okay, good. Thanks. Yes, past me. Um, but the truth is those movies don't matter at all. Well, I mean, they do matter in the sense that they're a resume for me to Kevin Feige, but when the movies get made, if they're a massive hit and this comic book universe takes off and rivals Marvel and DC, uh, that's not my point. My point is I need to come in, you know, like a football manager comes in when a football team is struggling and then they, you need to help that team. I am like that for the MCU. I need to come into Marvel and and then fix it. And how I'm going to do that is by being in charge of the Fantastic Four movie. So let me get on to my pitch to Kevin Feige now. You know, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Secret Wars is coming soon. Actually, you might not know that because it's a secret, hence the name. Well, you know, in Doctor Strange 2, the multiverse was shown to us. You know, the multiverse, right? It's this scientific concept that this reality that we live in is actually one of multiple realities. And there's somebody like you, but maybe slightly different, and there's infinite possibilities. Well, that's the multiverse. And although Doctor Strange 2, the movie, was just fine, it did introduce an important character that is going to be coming in the MCU, and that is Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, who is the smartest man on Earth. And although the Reed Richards in Doctor Strange 2 sucked, we can just say maybe that Earth sucked along with it, and that's just the smartest man in that Earth. Well, okay, so multiverse aside, we know that the Fantastic Four movie is coming up, and that precedes Secret Wars. Here's the thing, right? Secret Wars is actually about two different universes fighting against each other. So heroes that we love on both sides from different universes fighting against each other. So you need to care about both of those sides for that movie to work. So here's my pitch to Kevin Feige about why I should do the Fantastic Four movie. Fantastic Four movie should be two different Reed Richards from two different universes and the movie is from both of their perspectives and that way leading into Secret Wars they will be the leaders on either side of these universes going at a war so you care about both sides. This is also going to introduce the Council of Reeds which is a thing and let's not get into all the details but the point is it should be left in my hands because I'm capable and the MCU is in dire straits. What's my other Meanwhile on Snapchat if you want to know about the MCU. But for now, let's close the story right here. You see my point? I should be doing this. Now this whole comic book universe that I've created on this Meanwhile on Snapchat, maybe that's what I'm going to do. Maybe Destiny is pushing me in that direction. But me and Destiny have a really weird relationship and she usually does what I say more than she tells me what to do. So I'm saying now, Destiny, get me this Marvel thing with the Fantastic Four. Okay, thanks for watching the video, guys. This is now an end screen. What that means is you've reached the end of the video, but have no fear, there is stuff to get on with. You need to hit subscribe down below and then once you're ready, hit the linked video up above and get your journey started.